Hello, I keep seeing YouTubers who are claiming it's cheaper to run a diesel car than an electric car. So I thought I would look at some of the numbers and the facts. I've always been keen on numbers, so every car I've ever owned, right back to my very first Ford Anglia 50 years ago. So I'm going to share my calculations with you. I do hope you can like and subscribe and please look at some of my other videos and please leave any comments down below. So I've had my Tesla Model 3 for 20 months. Before that, I had an Audi A3 diesel. And before that, 18 petrol and diesel cars. And before that, I was uh, driving the RAF. Now, most YouTubers accept that charging an EV at home is cheaper than a diesel. There aren't many that dispute that. But many say diesel is cheaper than electric if you charge at a public charger. Well, my Tesla Model 3 has done 15,000 miles and its watts per mile for that time is 241 kilowatts per mile. But you can also express it as miles per kilowatt hours and that's 4.1. And most people tell you that's very, very good. The WLTP figures for my Tesla are 18.2 kilowatts an hour for 100 miles, which is much better than my real world because actually I worked it out it's actually 24.39 but that still beats most cars that are being made because the Tesla is very very efficient. Obviously I'm not a boy racer but uh, I don't drive at 28 miles per hour which is what the WLTP do for their testing. Uh, they also test in the summer warmer climates. As I drive in winter down to minus 10 degrees in Scotland back in December and also 75 miles an hour legal in Portugal and Spain on the auto routes and also 70 miles an hour here up to Scotland a couple of times a year obviously the numbers aren't going to be as good as driving around at 30 miles an hour so it's the real world range and I've done a number of videos on the subject so let's take a look at the best WLTP figures for EVs and who is the worst there's 350 EVs on the list uh, with all the model variants the list is from Carwell, very grateful to. So at number one on the list is the Renault Twizy that does 10.1 kilowatt hours over 100 miles, light year, don't know. Tesla Model 3 at number four does 18.2 kilowatt per hours over 100 miles. Then there's the Tesla Long Range at five and the Peugeot 208 that's doing 19.3. Then the Polestar, Tesla Model Y, Volkswagen ID, 11 is the Peugeot and then at 12 is the Tesla Model Y followed by the Volkswagen that gets 20.4 another Volkswagen Fiat Polestar BMW at 17 a BYD Dolphin at 18 Polestar and Polestar 2 and long range 24 BMW i4 Skoda 25 Tesla Model S Plaid 28 Hyundai, Darcy at 29, Hyundai 32 BMW, uh, Fiat 500 at 32, Skoda, Xpeng, down to 39, one I really don't know, the, the DS310, Tesla Model 3 Performance, BYD Dolphin, Fiat 500 at 42, Hyundai, Hyundai, BYD at 45, Another Dolphin, BYD, Dacia, Tesla Model Y, Toyota. Didn't know they had an electric car, but it's on the list. It must be in a country, not in the UK. Fiat 500, Hyundai Mini Cooper at 53. You get the picture. Okay, so now let's go down to the bottom of the list. So if we start at 300 or 299, we've got Volvos and BMW at 303. Then at 305, MG Marvel R, AWD, Performance, well down, Porsche Taycan, Vinfast, VF8, Audi e-tron at 308, another Porsche Taycan, 308, 311, Vinfest, 312, X-Pen, I thought they were the cars for the Chinese people, 313, Audi e-tron, Rolls-Royce, I'm not surprised that's there, 313, 315 BYD, uh, 317 Audi e-tron, 
and uh, Jaguar I Pace at 321, Lotus at 33, 325, Mercedes Benz, 326, Porsche, Mercedes Porsche, Mercedes Porsche, Porsche, um, Porsche Taycan, you get the picture. Maserati 338, Audi, Volvo, Rivian, Rivian, Porsche, Porsche Taycan, Audi, e tron, Rivian, Rivian, Audi down to Rivian and clearly the trucks don't do well in the performances because they're not very aerodynamic Rivian and the Ford F-150 near the bottom of the list and you see a lot of these with just one person and there you are so you get the picture okay so Tesla superchargers cost between 38p and 44p kilowatts an hour depending on the time of day you go 44p is normally for the peak hours 4 p.m to 8 p.m 38p is the rest of the day using 40p as an average at tesla superchargers i have a 50 kilowatt hour battery and my average of 241 watts per mile or expressed another way 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour means the range of my tesla is on average since i've had it for 207 miles fully charged you never actually charge a Tesla from 0 to 100%, but the cost at 40p a kilowatt hour would be 40 times 50 kilowatt hours, which is £20. I could drive 207 miles, and the 207 miles would cost 9.66p a mile. So let's call that 10p. And if I went during the peak times at 44p at kilowatt hour, it would cost £22 fully charged, Divide by, by 207 miles and will cost 10.6p a mile. That's at a Tesla supercharger at the busier time. Let's round that up to 11p a mile at the dearest time of the day. So charging a Tesla costs me either 10p or 11p depending on the day that I charge it. And of course my Tesla Model 3, as you can see from the list, is the most efficient EV on the market, apart from the Renault Twizy, which is a much smaller car. So the Audi A3 diesel I had before my Tesla Model 3 had a stop-start engine that turned off when it came to a halt to save fuel and fumes. So it was very efficient and I averaged 45 miles per gallon. And at the £6.50 a gallon at today's prices, I've worked out would cost 14.4p per mile, which is between 30 and 40% more than charging a Tesla Model 3 at a Tesla supercharger. I used to think my Audi was getting 50 to 60 miles a gallon until I checked in detail and recorded the numbers. Uh, and I was quite shocked with the real numbers at only 45 miles per gallon. And that's very, very close to the average for a diesel car. So I pay zero road tax and I've had no repairs and servicing. With the Audi, it was always well over a thousand a year. And you won't be able to beat charging at home price if you've got a diesel. And obviously you can't fill up your diesel at home. But you can an EV as you're eating, sleeping and watching television. Octopus Go have recently reduced their daily rates, making the 9.5p kilowatt an hour nighttime rate much more attractive. To get that price, you used to have to pay 40p during the day. Now they've reduced it to 30. And at 95 kilowatt hour at night it's a much better option so the octopus go night rate at 2.4 p a mile for my tesla model 3 would be less than half the price of a hundred mile per gallon diesel that's charging at night when you're asleep so if you haven't got a 60 mile per gallon diesel as most people haven't but you still want to prove that diesel is cheaper than EV, then you go to the, one of the most expensive chargers, often owned by the oil companies, and they prefer to spend billions exploring new oil fields instead of having really good, sensibly priced charging networks like Tesla, and not just one or two places where you can charge. Then find a very big, inefficient, ugly, expensive EV, mostly made by the legacy automators, and we all know who they are, and who incidentally do own Ionity, a very expensive public charger. It's owned by BMW, Ford Mercedes, VW, Audi, Porsche, and Hyundai. 
Unfortunately, recently, a number of the public charging networks have put their price up much more than the price of electricity has gone up because it has gone up, but it's also come down and they haven't put their prices down. So is it my imagination, but are the legacy automakers all desperate to make electric vehicles as unpopular as possible, even though they are making them? Well, I wish them good luck with that. Um, well, not really. What do you think? Uh, please leave a comment below. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you can like and subscribe and please look at some of my other videos. And don't forget to take your reusable mug wherever you go. See you next time. Take care. Bye for now.